At the age of four, I was diagnosed with leukemia, blood cancer. And that's how it looks. Fourteen years later, I won the fourth prize in physics at the Intel ISIF, one of the biggest science, international science and engineering fairs. Out of 1,500 people, that's how that looks. This presentation is about my journey from here to here. So let's start a little bit back. This is me, a happy and healthy four years old child. That was a month before I was diagnosed. Then I went through half a year of chemo and I was recovered and went back home. By then the future looked bright and I almost forgot about it. Four years later, I was diagnosed with a relapse. I had leukemia for the second time. By then, it was pretty obvious that I will need a bone marrow transplantation in order to increase my chances of recovery. So, in order to help me to find a donor, I participated in a bone marrow a transplantation donation campaign as the poster boy, which means that these posters with my face were shown all over the country and I was also in a primetime TV show and pretty much everybody knew me. And it was annoying because everybody knew me and I didn't know them. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> that campaign was very successful. Four children who needed a donor found one. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of them but I've managed to recover without the transplantation. I was healthy once more. One year later, I had good news and bad news. The bad news was that I was diagnosed with another relapse. I had leukemia for the third time. By then, I needed that transplantation desperately. The good news were that one day before it, my mom, which was pregnant by then, went to a medical examination where we found out that my future brother is a full match donor for me. All I had to do now is to survive those next four months until we'll get born. Guess what? I made it. <laughs> when my brother was born, my father rushed from the delivery room to the hospital to deliver the cord blood and to prepare the transplantation. And a few days later, I entered the operation, which was very successful, but sadly, due to some complications, left me in a wheelchair. You can probably guess by now that I missed a little bit of school, about two years, and I had to catch up somehow. And luckily, I have amazing parents who found, who came out with a solution for me. Video conference. We installed one part on a TV at our home and another part on a TV at school. And by that, I could almost physically be at class. I had to raise my hand in order to participate in the discussions and even to be excused to the bathroom. <laughs> but there are also some positive sides to the sickness because it gave me a chance to develop a passion I had from early age science. I had a lot of time and a direction, biology, because of all the doctors and medicine and diseases and figuring out what's happening around me. And also I had unlimited access to doctors and medicine and knowledge in biology. It's like a whole university just for me. <laughs> so I got into biology. I started learning anatomy and how the organs function, but it didn't satisfy me. And that's because I want to understand why does it behave like it does. And I didn't find my answers by then. 
But I learned that everything in biology is made out of chemistry. So I moved into chemistry. But I only found more gaps because they want to understand why there is one stuff which is red and the other is green and the other is liquid. But I learned that everything in chemistry is made out of, of physics. So I moved into physics. And I just got more and more deeply into it until I got into particle physics. I was about 10 by then. <laughs> I was so excited about it that when we had a science project at our school to choose a type of energy, research it and demonstrate it, I chose for my group nuclear energy. So we, three 10 years old students, started learning nuclear physics and nuclear energy. And how does one study nuclear physics? Wikipedia. So I opened the entry of nuclear physics in Wikipedia and started reading. Okay, I know that word. I know that word. That word I don't know. There is no connection between those two. I think I need a break. And that was the simple part, because then we had to demonstrate that energy. So naturally, we chose to build a nuclear missile. But because it's a little hard for 10 years old students to get uranium and rocket fuel, we decided to replace the uranium with soda powder and the rocket fuel with vinegar. And we decided to rehearse at one of my friend's house. But he had none of them. So I decided to replace them with washing powder and lemon juice. Can you guess the result? It was a complete disaster. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't my last experiment. Six years later, I participated in a prestigious program of, run by the Davidson Institute of Science Education for young scientists. That program consisted two or three meetings a year of two days where we went through many lectures in many types of, many fields of science, went through some experiments and learned a lot of things. That where I was exposed for the first time to my subject of, the, of my project, the Higgs boson. I think that right now is a good time to explain what is that Higgs boson. So in simple words, the Higgs boson is the particle that according to particle physics is responsible to the existence of mass. You're probably wondering right now, why do we need a proof that mass exists? I mean, look around us. I have mass, this chair have mass, even you have mass. So why do we need a proof? But apparently it's not enough for particle physics, mainly because the most accepted particle physics theory today the standard model suggests that there shouldn't be any mass. So how could be mass? That, um, and nuclear physics scientists try to bridge that gap. Then at the 60s, um, many scientists and, and among them Peter Higgs proposed a model that says that there's a particle called the Higgs boson that's responsible for mass. All they have to do now is to prove that this particle exists. And here lies the problem. The problem is that you can't find that particle normally with magnifying glass or even a microscope. You'll need something much bigger that can detect much smaller things. The ultimate solution today is one of the biggest structures ever built. The LHC particle accelerator in CERN. That solution is based on Einstein's famous theory that states that mass and energy are equivalent. That means that particles which have mass can turn into energy and that energy can turn back into new particles. So what's happening in that structure that, that is that particles are accelerated, then collide together, and the results, which are the new particles, are detected in order to find new particles or new things in particle physics. Now, in order to explain it in a simpler way, let's use something we're more familiar, familiar with, fruits. Let's say we have two grapes. We accelerate them to unbelievable speed, about the speed of light, and then we let them smash together. Can you guess the result? Yummy grape juice. 
But it's not over here, because from that fruit juice, new fruits are created, like a few grapes and a couple of bananas and even a grapefruit. And it's not over even here, because those bananas and grapefruits are so heavy that they themselves break apart into smaller fruits, like smaller grapes and bananas and strawberries. Now, all that fruit salad is pretty nice, but you want to understand which fruits are in it. And that's where enters the detector. The detector have many components. Each one of them have different capabilities and very specific purpose. One of them can detect energy, the other can detect direction of movement, and the other one can detect if there was a grape in our fruit salad. Now, there are, if that looks now simple, there are many challenges in it. Because that a red banana, which is our Higgs boson, happens only one out of tr trillions of grapes that get smashed together. And also, those detectors only detect the small fruits that we get. And they need to reconstruct the original fruits that were in our fruit salad. So it's pretty much like looking for a needle in a haystack. And that's where enters another part, a program that takes all the information from the detector, analyzes, and gives us the fruits in our fruit salad. Now, if you got a little lost between the bananas and grapes, it's okay, I rather too. So in simple words, in my project, I developed one of those prog programs that took the information from the detector and told us if there was a Higgs boson, a red banana, or not. Now, through that project, I encountered many challenges. Some of them were hard, some of them were harder. Some of them were over the physics nature, and some of them over the human nature. And one of them happened to me about two months before I had to hand my project. You see, my mentor was supposed to leave for a postdoctorate about a month before I had to hand my project. And we got nearer and nearer to that date. And the project wasn't over yet. And I got really stressed out. And then I found myself writing one of the saddest letter emails ever, uh, about a week before I was scheduled to leave, which I signed with the words that we started our project with until the bitter end. Fortunately, he didn't leave. And we finished the project. And then I was advised to participate in some competitions. So I participated in three competitions. The first one was in the Davidson Institute of Science Education, where I won the second prize. And there was another one in the Jerusalem Museum of Science, where I won the third one. And from that competition, I also got into the Israeli group that went to the Intel ISAF, which I mentioned at the beginning. And that was our group. For that uh, competition, we had to prepare two things. A lecture of about 15 minutes about our project and a poster. And after 15 intensive sessions with judges, I was announced that I won the fourth prize in physics in that competition. It was amazing. It was an unbelievable experience. I felt at the top of the world when I was announced and everybody applied to me and they had to go to the stage. It was truly amazing. So, so I won the fourth prize, the third prize, and the second prize. And for my parents, I'm always number one. <laughs> Now, this has been my journey so far. Today, I'm almost 19, and the future never looked brighter. Maybe I'll uh, go to the high tech, write software. Maybe I'll continue researching. Maybe I'll even end up teaching. I mean, I'm already a great lecturer. <laughs> but I know only one thing for sure. No matter what hardships, challenges, and relapses, life will throw upon you. If you have strong willpower, faith in yourself, 
and people around you that love you, everything is possible. Thank you.